I watched three movies and a show this month of May, so let's get into it. First, I watched Air. Guys, this was a fun movie. I've heard good reviews about this movie, and it did not disappoint. A movie about Nike shoes sounds pretty boring, but this had my full attention from beginning to end. Almost every shot and dialogue serves the story, builds the characters, or adds more gravitas to the stakes at hand. There's humor sprinkled throughout, even during the climax when everything is serious, and it worked for me. Even if I wasn't laughing out loud, I found it amusing. I wish they had a banger ending showing a montage of what happens to the Air Jordans after the movie's climax, but we get lines of text explaining it instead. Gotta give a shout out to all the 80s music they squeezed in there. I only recognized a few because I don't know that many 80s music, but it was fun to listen to and it set the tone of the era along with the attires and set design. Very enjoyable from start to finish. I highly recommend it. If you have Amazon Prime Canada, definitely check it out. Also on Amazon Prime Canada, I watched The Triangle of Sadness. I've heard good things about this one too, but after watching it, I have mixed feelings about this one. It starts off intriguing, showing the world of male model auditions, then follows a couple arguing over the bill at a restaurant, that was all interesting to see, then follows the couple on a cruise filled with rich people. It culminates in a hilarious climax where there were practical special effects where I was baffled at how they pulled it off. I just couldn't figure out how they did it. And then the climax came to a close and I thought that was the end of the movie. If it did end there, that would have been a great movie for me. But then there was a whole third act. This is where I felt the length of the movie. It's 2 hours and 20 minutes and man, it feels so long. It wasn't boring, but it did feel like a slow burn. If I was to rewatch this movie, I'd probably watch it up to the end of the climax and switch it off. But I still recommend it because it was laugh out loud funny for me in multiple scenes, not just the bodily fluids. If you like black comedies, definitely check this out. It's a good time. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 I watched in theaters. I watched every single Marvel movie in theaters up until Endgame. Then I started skipping movies that didn't seem worth it. I haven't seen Thor 4 Love and Thunder, nor have I seen Ant-Man 3 Quantumania, but Guardians 3? I had to watch it in theaters. The first Guardians of the Galaxy I watched three times in theaters. Many things about it really resonated with me at the time. Then again, I was full blown manic at the time, so a lot of movies resonated with me and made me emotional. Guardians 2 didn't have the same effect on me, but it was still entertaining. Guardians 3, this one, made me cry heavy tears. Some people say they cried four times in this movie. For me, it was the scene of poor baby Rocket frightened and in pain. I think distressed animals get me choked up more than distressed people. The humor usually didn't work for me, similar to the second movie. A lot of shouting at each other in this one. At times it was annoying. I felt sorry for Will Poulter playing Adam Warlock. It seemed like the only reason they included him is because they teased him in the post credit scene in Guardians 2. He didn't get much screen time, and apparently it doesn't even come close to portraying the comic book character who is the next evolution of humanity. They changed him into comic relief. On the other hand, I like what James Gunn did with Star-Lord. He was similar to the first movie where he seems like a fool but is smarter than you think. He shines a couple times in this movie. Dave Bautista has said before that he was unhappy with how Drax is always played for comic relief when he's called Drax the Destroyer. That definitely continues in this final movie of his, but they show a softer side to him and give him a pretty good ending. Gamora was turned into a dick. She seemed way worse than the Gamora from the first movie, but when there was a crisis, she did prove herself by acting as a savior, so I wasn't upset about this character. It's a little surprising where James Gunn leaves her character at the end, but it's consistent with the whole movie so it makes sense. It would have been interesting to see what Gunn had in mind for her before Endgame when he was fired from Marvel, but he did well with the cards he was dealt. The Holiday Special was pretty much a Mantis short film, and I liked her there more than in this movie, where she often came off as annoying. They play her for humor as well, but she's pretty much a worse version of Drax. It's funny how Nebula was a forgettable side villain in the first movie, and now she's pretty much as important as other Guardians members. She's grown on me, and when she asks if Rocket is okay, you realize she must have bonded with him when they were the only two Guardians who weren't snapped into dust. This felt like a Rocket origin movie first, and a Guardians movie second, and it worked for me. Oftentimes, I'll see a flashback in a movie or show, and I don't care and want to skip it, because I know they're just trying to make me care about a character so that it's more significant when something happens to them, but I just want to see the plot move forward instead of a long flashback. That wasn't the case in this movie. I was equally invested in the flashback as much as the main plot. 
There's a cool one-shot hallway fight scene, and Gun said he was inspired by the Korean movie Old Boy. It's cool to see his take on the inspiration. There is a jarring cut after it's finished, which made me think, what? That was an abrupt edit? Some are calling this the best MCU movie, others are saying this is not an MCU movie at all, still others are calling it good but a bit of a mess. I didn't have super strong feelings when I walked out of the theater other than, yeah, that was a good time. I liked it better than the second movie, although I'm not going to see it in theaters again like I did with the first. Worth watching though. Then I watched After Party Season 1 on Apple TV+. Season 2 is coming out soon, so they were promoting this. This was a lighthearted and silly whodunit mystery spanning various genres. The musical episode was my least favorite, but the whole premise kept me watching to find out what would happen. I liked the ridiculous action comedy elements of it. At the climax, when the deductions and evidence are being laid out, most of the hints are plausible and some of the small ones feel forced, but it was pretty fun. If you're in the mood for a silly comedy, check it out on Apple TV+. Now that John Wick Chapter 4 is out on digital, I'm going to watch just the action scenes and skip everything else. If you want to know what I thought about it, here's my review of John Wick Chapter 4.